I want to take a few minutes to address something that is going on right now. And a part of it is to encourage you to open your eyes, to see things from the Lord's perspective, as opposed to what you may be getting fed. This is partially in response to a viral video that some doctors did. The video went viral, but then it was taken down by multiple social media outlets. And a part of this, they were saying, basically it's for your protection. That was false information. Rather than letting you see it and for you to decide. Now, you may have seen the video or one of the derivative, derivatives, and you may have drawn your own conclusion. And if you have seen the video, then it may make you wonder, why did they take it down? What was being presented that was so dangerous? And one of the prevailing things is that they don't want any, anything contrary to what the World Health Organization has put out. As if the World Health Organization is the definitive source. There's a thing when you're dealing with a narcissist called mask slippage. When the mask slips, do not simply believe what people tell you, but also believe what they do, how they act. With the World Health Organization, you saw how they, you may have seen how they defended China, as if they didn't want to say anything bad against China. And the powers of being a World Health Organization, they weren't showing a care for humanity, they were showing a care for China. But now we're supposed to trust the World Health Organization as if they're the definitive source, and that there can't be any voices contrary to what the World Health Organization is putting out that may be plausible. One of the things when doing certain things, like in a battle, yes, a general is going to know a lot, but there are things the troops on the front line, they're going to know that the general won't. Even if they have intelligence devices like a UAV or UAS that is looking at the troops and what they're doing, that general is not going to have kind of awareness that a frontline soldier is going to have. And to say that you should only hear from the general as opposed to the frontline soldiers, there's an issue with that. But apart from me addressing this, is I kind of knew what was going to come. They took down the video, and then they started trying to discredit the people who made the video. Whether they're right or wrong, you have to look, about, look at how people are going about things. So they took down the video as if it is for your protection then they're trying to discredit the people who made the video as if someone else who probably hasn't as if other people, other doctors who have not seen patients probably years that they know more than those who are on the front lines and in one particular person that they're really pulling at is a minister and they're pulling at the minister because the minister has put out information about things she believes, things they may believe but not confess, or things they may not believe. But rather than coming against the frontline information, they're coming against a person in what is called an ad hominem attack. According to Merriam-Webster, the definition of ad hominem Appealing to feelings or prejudices rather than intellect. Marked by or being attacked on an opponent's character rather than an answer to the contentions made. So for example, a doctor stated that she has treated X amount of patients and they've all survived. That's kind of like Harriet Tubman didn't lose not one. So if a doctor said that she treated X amount of patients and they survived, but then you're going to start quoting information about, well, other studies have shown that it is, this drug is dangerous. So someone successfully treated numerous people with the drug and you're going to quote a study that proves otherwise. 
are you trying to find the truth? Are you truly trying to save people's lives? Or are you just trying to pro project a narrative? If it can save one life, if it has saved a hundred lives, numerous lives, then why is there a war against that as being a treatment? As opposed to waiting on a vaccine that may or may not work. And a part of the ad hominem attack is coming against, for example, the doctor who's also administered based on certain beliefs. So it's not to say that the person didn't treat X amount of patients and they all did well, but it's come against a person's beliefs. And when you're trying to pull something apart, it's like a piece of garment, if you're trying to pull it apart, you try to find a one loose thread that you can pick at. And the hope is if you pull that one loose thread, you can tear it all apart. So by trying to come against one person to tear away the testimony of voices that are contrary to the generally accepted narrative. Also in the definition, there's a section that says, um, did you know? Ad hominem literally means to the person. In New Latin, Latin as first used in post-medieval text, in centuries past, this adjective usually modified argument an argument ad hominem or argumentum ad hominem to use the full Latin phrase was a valid method of persuasion by which a person took advantage of his or her opponent's interest or feelings, religion, faith, in a debate instead of just sticking to the general principles. So let the doctor there try and discredit. Let's just say that her beliefs in what we would call demonology are just totally incorrect. Does that mean that what she said about HCQ is totally wrong? It is said that a broken clock analog is correct twice per day. If it's a digital clock and it is showing a time, it's going to be correct at least once per day. So if what she is saying as a minister is incorrect, does it mean what she's saying as a doctor is not correct? When you see that there is a public debate and one voice is being silenced, it says a lot. When you see a public debate and not only is the voice silenced, but there is also an attempt to discredit the person based on personal things, that is an issue. And there are certain things I won't say because if I say it, it may seem as if I'm leaning to one political side. And don't be fooled by the color of my shirt. It is for the fire of God, the blood of the Lamb, not a political party. But look at what you're being fed. Look at what you don't and people don't want you to know. Are you a child that requires so much protection? that you can't discern for yourself between right and wrong, good and evil. So ad hominem, we're not discrediting the person as a doctor and also look if they try to do that, as opposed to saying, did this person treat X amount of patients and did they actually do as well as she said? That is a legit, legit, legitimate argument did the person actually treat X amount of patients and did they do as well as she said? Did the medication perform in, in concert with the other therapeutics? Did they perform as well as they said instead of the personal attacks? Because even if she's wrong about everything else, if she's right about the treatment, then she's onto something. But because the World Health Organization which shows that it is corrupt, and like the red shirt I'm wearing, so pro-China as opposed to pro-humanity. When there is a, a trial, 
the defense team may come up with their expert witnesses. The prosecution, prosecution may come up with their expert witnesses. And they may not agree. So even in attacking this doctor, they may come up with other ministers who are saying, oh, what she's saying is just totally wrong. But in Acts 23, the Apostle Paul stood before some holy men. I use the term holy, correct, they were religious men. And in Acts 23, stern verse 7, after Paul had said some things, it states, And when he had said so, there arose a dissension between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the multitude was divided. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit, but the Pharisees confess both. So here it is, two groups of people believing or allegedly, well, believing in the same God, serving the same God. But the Sadducees didn't believe in angels, spirits, or the resurrection. But the Pharisees did. So also look out if they try to bring someone who is also of faith to say that what the doctor has been saying about spiritual things. It's like psychotic. It's crazy. And regarding ad hominem attacks, two righteous men in the Bible, John the Baptist and Jesus the Christ, they both experienced ad hominem attacks. See, when they came on the scene, they were telling people to repent because the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. One of the things is, they couldn't tell John that he was wrong. In fact, Jesus even challenged the Pharisees, John's baptism, is it of God or of men? And they start strategizing, saying, well, if we say that it's of John, if we start saying it's of God, and then they say they don't know. So they knew, but they were trying to strategize. So they couldn't defeat those men with arguments. And with Jesus, they tried him a lot, but they couldn't defeat him. And in Luke 7, starting verse 33, the Lord said, For John the Baptist came, neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and ye say, he hath a devil. So John was walking upright. They couldn't find anything, and they said he had a devil. They accused Jesus, who cast out demons, of having a devil. Which is where, when the Lord said that a house divided cannot stand, and by Satan's kingdom is not divided. And then the Lord continued, The Son of Man is come, eating and drinking. And ye say, Behold, a gluttonous man, and a wine-bibber, and a friend of publicans and sinners. So John he didn't, didn't eat bread or drink, and they said he had a devil. Jesus ate bread and drank, and they said he was a glutton and a drunkard and a friend of sinners. So here you have two men who were different in how they interacted with people. But no matter what they did, they had something to say, something contrary. The cause People didn't want to believe the messages from those men. And they always found something to say to justify their unbelief. And even worse, they tried saying something to discredit righteous men. In Matthew 23, the Lord spoke about the Pharisees, about they were not going to heaven. But the worst thing about that is that they were stopping others from going to heaven also. This is going on today where people are trying to stop others from hearing the truth or at least an alternative to what is going on. If you wear a mask or don't wear a mask, that is up to you. But even if you're wearing a mask, keep your eyes open. Believe what the Lord shows you. Keep your ears open. Believe what you hear. Even if your mouth is muzzled, don't let the other vessels of discernment go numb or dumb.
I have another message coming out regarding those who have sold their souls. God bless you. Jesus is Lord.